internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, it's Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe. You got your sound turned up so you can hear what's going on. We're doing another interview here on Synergy Cafe. And I've got a new friend. I forgot his name already because he's got a very unique and special name. And his name is? Delanova Star Livingstone. Delanova. Okay. Yeah, Delanova Star Livingstone. Delanova That's means new day. And S-T-A-R, the hyphenated part, uh, brings it up, ties it into the fifth dimension. We're going to be doing dimensions here. Okay. I should be looking at you or should I be looking at me? We're doing some deep stuff. You should be looking into your camera so then it looks like people oh. you're looking at the people. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you there go. You go. <laughs> exactly. And I know this is kind of a weird thing this way, but uh, my well, alarm. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit like I'm talking to something, not somebody. So yep. anyway, long That's short, just it. You have to kind of short, pretend. Uh, <laughs> Delanova stands for New Day. That's the derivative of It's a Melchizedek name that was given in 1973. And that's because... Uh, I'm involved with others uh, in in the new creation that's going on in Andromeda. Got so, it. Real a, a bit of quick history. All right, a real quick bit of, of history. The the universe is 900 trillion light years across. Okay, it's not 13 and a half billion or 14. It's it's 900 trillion light years across. It's composed of seven great super universes. And they were all built on the male side. You know, the, 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 the Holy Trinity is actually a father, a mother, and a daughter son. As above, so below. It's Got the it. same thing. As above, so below. So it was all built on the, on the male side of the only begotten son frequencies. Before we get now, into the deep stuff, let's learn a little bit more about you. Are you married yourself? Right. You got kids? Am I what? You married and have children? No. No, what? I have children, but they're from the 60s when I was a hippie. <laughs> okay, cool. and now, you live up north of me, uh, northeast, uh, basically, up in Canada area, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm over here in Minnesota, so we're kind of neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Minnesota's not far. I lived in Winnipeg for uh, 14 years, back through the 50s and, and uh, uh, you know, up until the mid-50s, so on. that's just north of you guys. Exactly. When you got it cold, we got it cold. <laughs> or it, should, it was the other way around. It came down. So when we got it cold, you guys got it cold. That's exactly. I moved to Asheville, North time. Carolina for a couple of years, and we used to say we'd pulled all the cold air from Canada down to Asheville. <laughs> well, it's changed, you know. There's a, you know, With all of the energies and stuff on the move now, the, the, the weather cycles have changed quite a bit. Sure. Winnipeg gets a lot less cold than they used to. You know, I went to school in 1953. It was 52 wow. below zero wow. in Fahrenheit. So wow, I was it, I was born in fifty seven. One more degree, they would have closed the school. But it was like opening a freezer, you know, a big deep freezer. You know, every <laughs> the air crackles. Well, the air was crackling all the way to school and back. It was just <laughs> really something. So now, now it gets to be like twenty. Now it gets to be twenty degrees. Oh, don't go out, button up. You know, it's freezing. It's the terrible. <laughs> you know, they're wimps. <laughs> well, it, tell us. Like, Tell us a little bit about what it is you do. I know that it gets into some very deep spirituality and, uh, and uh, more new age kind of stuff. So if you want to share a little bit about what it is that you do and what your mission is, your vision, mission. Well, I, there's, there's, two, there's two projects up on the Internet. and I, uh, One is called the Revelatorium, R-E-V-E-L-A-T-O-R-I-U-M.com. That's the whole outline of what's going on, the new creation in Andromeda, the, we're in the after, we're in the cleanup in the aftermath of the Luciferian rebellion of the cosmic overplus. How's that? Deep, 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 deep. So <laughs> that's the official term. All right. It was five billion years ago. It wasn't a newbie, and and Lucifer and God aren't having a fist fight. Lucifer was a was an administrator out of Orion that came up with some off the wall ideas of doing things. He proposed them. They were rejected for obvious reasons. So. The fall of pride was he said, well, what the heck, I'm going to do them anyway. And he got others to go along with him. But here's the perspective. 
when I say there's creation is 900 trillion light years across, okay, uh, our galaxy alone has 100 billion stars and they have planets. So you're looking at maybe a trillion planets in this galaxy alone. But this local universe has a thousand galaxies. So that's a lot of planets. All right. But the local universe is only one of trillions inside this whole big creation. So there's your scale. The Luciferian rebellion only ever touched on 27,000 planets, you know, barely a drop in the bucket, and only 2,500 like Earth ever got a third dimension in. That's what Lucifer wanted who, to do. He wanted to bring. Who counts these things? Who counts these <laughs> things? Count, counts them, counts the planets. How do you know that? Well, it's an approximation, I, right? I, I, I haven't been out there counting them. I took it to the, the information that I got was, you know, but Sam. It, it's it's there's there, there's people around. I'm not the only one, but the, you know there's people. It's not channeling. People talk about channeling. That's, that's an email that just came through. So I'm on the same. I can't do anything about that. Oh, I can turn off my email. Well, it's I'm, okay. Uh, Don't worry about it. it. It's on vacation. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, there's um, uh, you, you know there's there's people like myself that are involved. People talk about channeling. Channeling is telepathic between your outer consciousness and some other entity's outer consciousness, okay? So it's a lesser source of information. Then you have what's called Melchizedek, uh, which is your higher consciousness is in tune with the higher consciousness of higher dimension. That's where the real information comes in because it comes through uncluttered. It comes through pure information. Now, usually it doesn't, it's not like somebody's talking to you. You don't write it out on a piece of paper. Pow, the thought is there. Now, you have to flush it out into a third dimensional understanding. And in my role in all of this was to wordsmith it into a literal form that people could read and understand. Got it. Got now, it. now, the Revelatorium started at the end of the 90s. It's been up for a while, and it still gets stuff added to it. The big project that started this uh, um, in June, there was a, uh, it was called Alien Cosmic Conference. It was a UFO conference. But people from all over the world came to Brantford, um, you know, for lectures and things like that. And I had a small table. She wouldn't let me lecture, but I had a table with about 40 or 50 pictures of what are called radionic clouds. Um, you know, the Bible is written from one end to the other, clouds, and, you know, clouds in the sky. And you can send it from clouds. Clouds are not little cumulus clouds with angels up there playing harps, all right? When a radionic ship comes into Earth's fifth dimension, it sets up a magnetic field, and the magnetic field gets reflected in the you know in the clouds below as radial lines. That's one of the types. That's the main type. And and so, I was exposing this idea of these radionic clouds because Brantford has you know in the website radionic radionics.com is the website. There's a PDF you can get for. 10 bucks, I guess there's also a book. Um, but there's now over 400 of photographs and full explanation. I was asked to put that together because, you know, everybody's waiting for the government to uh, disclose the fact that they know that there are UFOs. That's everybody's talking about disclosure. Why don't they do that? Well, this disclosure has been given, but it's been given in a different way. The radionic fleet has given you through this website and stuff which was information I got and put down, how to see them. <laughs> how do I put it any other way? They have uncloaked themselves by giving you the rules to see them. Okay, so no, you're, you're not going to... Let me kind of grasp all this. That you're <laughs> saying that on your website, you've got a PDF that will will teach people or show people ways of uncloaking that so they can see what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the website okay. itself, the PDF is the website put into a PDF form. So it's the same info. But the difference between a PDF is you can carry it around with you, you put it on your computer. You don't have to be on the internet in your browser to do it. Right. Okay. So PDFs are very handy. I, I, so I just mentioned it. That, yeah, it's you know, a document. Because a lot of people like to go that route. But it, the website, radionics.com, is the official disclosure. It Got was it. done because, because we're now in a, you know, the idea of a UFO standing on the White House lawn and a guy stepping out saying, take, it, it take is, me to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> the, the higher, you know, the you know, this is a Christ action. This is exactly 100 percent of continuation of 2,000 years ago. Because you know, when He cometh again, He cometh with clouds. Well, the clouds part are already in place. 
you know, and we're in the cleanup in the aftermath of the Lutheran Rebellion, which is a huge thing going on. And there's millions and millions of these ships. They're in a, a vast congregation outside the orbit of Pluto, thousands a day teleporting into Earth, into Earth's fifth dimension, and these clouds show up. They're all over the Earth. The, the, the website has photo. Now, this is as many as I've got so far. Of course, a lot of them off the Internet. But they're from uh, Brantford, from Toronto, from Los Angeles, from Vancouver, from Uganda. I got a friend in Uganda that's been hip to these things now for about three or four years. So he keeps sending me photographs whenever he sees one. So let me so, ask a know, few questions. All- let me ask you a couple of questions. Like, so I'm trying to understand all this. Like, if someone sees something one dimensional, they just see one side of it, right? If they see yeah, yeah, like yeah. something that's uh, like two dimensional, they might see the other side of it. And then when you got three dimensional, they might see the edge. So it's more of a of a three dimensional object. But in the fourth dimension, we don't really see what it is. And in the fifth dimension, we don't. That's why we don't well, it's see. Well, the fifth Earth has a fifth dimension. You you know, people talk about the flat Earth. They argue that Earth is flat. Well, they're partially correct. Earth's fifth dimension is flat. All right. But the fourth dimension uh, is actually like uh, onions, uh, skins of an onion. There's 49 energy levels or octaves. The fourth dimension is a, a transition of, of, of energies. The whole Mayan calendar thing from the 60s through to 2012, all of those different housing, you know, those energy things that they talk they were going progressively through the 49 octaves of the astral states to bring us to the point we are now, because we're in a 2000 year age of Aquarius now, having finished, just finished the 2000 year age of Pisces, Piscean age. And during Aquarius, the whole galactic law is going to be brought back in. Man's consciousness is going to be raised right back up to the fifth dimension. And at the end of Aquarius, the population will be removed from the surface of the planet. Everything will be back in again in the fifth dimension, which is the Garden of Eden. 25,000 years ago, it was, you know, the Garden of Eden was Earth's fifth dimension. The bottom line of creation is the fifth dimension. There is nothing in the third dimension anywhere except this little tiny bit that the Luciferian, you know, action, uh, you know, went rogue and took off track a little bit. But that's all now being cleaned up and finalized and finished. Gone forever. Got it. We're yeah. here doing it like you are. Everybody's doing their bit. You're here. What you're doing here is 100% in the bit. You know what I mean? Okay. So, you know, so, it's all part of consciousness is expansion. What you're doing will help all your viewers. Doesn't matter who you're interviewing. Their consciousness isn't going to go down after the interview. It's going to be up. Okay, I got it, got it. Because a little more information into the consciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, let's get into filtering, you're filtering positive stuff not that you're not letting some get in there and blast away it you know you're you're pretty good at filtering i'm pretty sure okay let's take it down a little bit and more of a grounded right. level um what is it that when you're doing your work and stuff like you mentioned you you were at an event and things where do you do your work do you do your you do you like help people via coaching and consulting or you no, exhibit no, I do zero of that kind of stuff absolutely zero of that kind so what of stuff. do you do well, I'm, I'm basically, my, my, my responsibility has been to bring the revelatorium through and get it out, which is now out. Uh, and recently um, to put together this um, disclosure. No, it is an official disclosure. And I'm now just, you're the first interview <laughs> to get it out. This, the, the, the Radionics uh, website, the PDF, and there's a book, all right? Um, should be in everybody's hands on the planet because so it's basically over. you're taking information from other dimensions and bringing it down and then well, giving... I'm being given i'm being cha- i'm not cha- i got to say from there yeah information is being, being given to being... me down from uh higher dimensions yeah other dimensions are project. giving information to you and then you are uh compiling yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the wordsmith i'm not the author got it. Know you there. no i'm not i'm the wordsmith There's i understand I'm the understand. Wordsmith. i love yes that. you're yeah. just the messenger I get it. Uh, well, yeah, that's it too. Will you sign a copy of the book? No, no. The message <laughs> is the message, not the author. You know, I don't want to sign exactly. the book because that becomes the coveted part, <laughs> okay. not the stuff inside. See, I won't. I won't sign a book. Totally get it. Well, um, before I ask my favorite question, that's the big why question. Um, let's. Um, can you share how we get a hold of you or how the the, the website specifically again? Well, all right. The, the main one right now, we'll go with that, is radionics.com. R-A-D-I-O-N-N-I-C-S.com. It's the same. 
it, it, the, the idea behind it is that it's radiation or magnetic, you know, like uh, there's all kinds of radi radi um, um, you know, radionic with one end, you know, devices for health. Yeah. You know, like they radiate and you put it on your arm and that kind of stuff. Well, I'm using two ends because this is actually a magnetic radiation from the ship. So I've, I've tied the whole thing through to that idea of radionic. Also, too, the clouds are like radial spokes of a wheel. You know, it's a magnetic Got it. wheel. See? Got so, it. It's radiation. It's radionics. like heat radiation. Radionics. Yeah. Got it. My, my, my email, if anybody wants that, is delstar at rogers.com. That's D E L S T A R R two R's, and uh, Rogers is R O G E R S. Rogers is Canada's big uh, AT and T kind of thing. Right, I understand. Okay, well now I'm going to ask my favorite question. And that's the big why question. Why is it you're doing this as opposed to being like a a high school teacher or a gym teacher or well, coaching the local softball team? <laughs> when you're when you're at the age of 12, this happens to everybody on the planet. At the age of 12, you're given an epiphany, some kind of a an event occurs, whose intention is to steer your growth from that point on into a spiritual direction, rather than a material direction. Now, most people that pass it through, they ignore it and so on. It stuck with me. Now, it didn't stick with me like from that point on because it was about two. I was I was in my mid twenties, this would be 1965 and so on. I'd finished university and so on. And then it started, all of a sudden I started thinking, is there life on other planets? Well, it took me six months to finally break through that barrier that yeah, there's probably life on Saturn, but that was the link through, you know, like the universe is inner, not outer. And that was the link through. And then it started from there. In the early seventies, uh, by assorted uh, ways I was directed to a Melchizedek teaching that was being brought together in, and in, in, yeah. in, uh, in Vancouver. Now there was supposed to have been thousands upon thousands, that, but it, but uh, drugs, uh, the Eastern mystics had started coming in. So there was only about, you know, 50, 60, maybe all together. But I stayed with that all the way through until the beginning of the eighties. And then I did nothing. And I mean, literally nothing. I, I you know, lived, you know, but I didn't have a career. I just, you know, I sold flowers and bars and restaurants. I, I uh, experimented with speakers, but I hit the uh, recession at the end in the middle of the 80s, so I couldn't get it moving ahead and so on. So I've been project oriented, not career oriented. Got it. But in, in 1997, out of the clear blue, all, it was like, it wasn't like a, it was a voice, thought voice, call it a thought voice, it says, we're giving you another responsibility. Now, at the time, we were, my brother and I were involved with an antivirus business, and I thought it had to do with that. But all of a sudden, one day, I started thinking about the stuff I'd been taught in the 70s. And uh, I thought, you know, I started to get a feeling I'd sit down and type something out, you know, put it on, on the computer. So, well, I sat down. I was going to do something. Like, there's a chapter in the Revelatory called The Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. And in 75, I'd done a one and a half page explanation of how the Tree of Life worked with the 12 chakras. That was it. That was my entirety for that whole length of time until 97. So I was going to type that up. Well, I hit the keyboard and I typed thumbnails. And now there's thumbnails at the, at the, at the end of the revel, revelatorium. And I just suddenly put down bullet points like bam, 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 bam. And I had about six to seven of them. And that's where it started. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, that was what the new project <laughs> we give you. It was, bring, you know, you know, the term, you know, have you ever heard of drum bellow Melchizedek? Any, any, I have not. like that? No. Well, he's, there's there's other people that were supposed to have done the job that I've just finished in the Revelatory, but their consciousness never got, they, they, they learned everything that there was to know about the fourth dimension from the mystics, from the, you know, the old books, all that kind of stuff, which cluttered the thoughts. All right. Okay, so if stuff came through <laughs> from the top down, it would get, it would get filtered out and translated into what they already knew or think they knew. And so it would be corrupted thought. It wouldn't be pure. Well, I hadn't done any of that. I hadn't read anything. I hadn't, you know, I stayed completely clear. So the stuff came through, came through unfiltered. So, Got it. so anyway, I, I was handed the job and the revelatorium is now basically finished. You know, the changes that are going in now are, are just little tweaks. You know, they're like the main core of information. The entire intelligent design of creation is in there. It's sitting there like a golden nugget waiting to be discovered. The intelligent design and creation, not 
the mathematical formula that maybe is or not. You know, butterflies are beautiful. They couldn't happen by accident. God must have created. There's the proof. You know, it's nothing like that. The entire intelligent design, how creation has been formulated and put together, is in there, and it's actually quite simple. Got it. I'll Got leave it. that alone. Go look at. It. But anyway, that's finished. So starting off at the, uh, at the after <laughs> Ace, uh, we again said, well, let's get it going. You know, and I I work 12, 14 hours a day, like people thought I was nuts, compulsively seven days a week for the last six months and it's now ready to go and you're my first interview okay <laughs> all right well with that i'm going to close this one off